Welcome to the Practice of Medicine podcast from the Southern Medical Association. Since 1906, SMA has had a singular mission to provide medical professionals with the resources they need to learn from each other and in doing so, improve the overall quality of patient care. The Practice of Medicine podcast is just one of the ways we do that as we discuss a wide range of topics including multidisciplinary approaches to patient care and new innovations in medical technology. To learn more about SMA's many other services and educational initiatives, please visit us at sma.org. I'm Dr. Lisa Fitzpatrick. And I'm Dr. David Melbridge. So David, we've come a long way with HIV treatment. I remember the days before protease inhibitors. Were you practicing then? <laughs> I, I was in residency. I'm dating myself. I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. I think we're dating both of ourselves. I was in okay. residency from 1996 to 1999 in internal medicine residency in New York City. And those were the days where we basically had AZT, uh, Zaret, DDI, uh, Rescriptors, uh -huh. some of these other medications that were extremely toxic. And actually during residency is when we, uh, the concept of triple therapy uh, was introduced and the protease inhibitors emerged. So that that was primarily my time. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's I'm still finding people who don't realize how much the treatment has been simplified. It reminds me of a patient I had who came in and he was on a calitra based regimen and had just learned to live with the diarrhea. And I explained to him that he had uh, much, much better options now. And because he had been on it for such a long time, he was nervous or afraid to come off of it. And it took me about six months to convince him to try it. And once he tried it, he was so grateful. So I, I you know, I think it, it's unfortunate that so many people still need to learn about this, but on the other hand, it's amazing. It's such an incredible advancement um, that should help us get many more people in, in treatment. Have you had experiences like that recently where people still are not aware about how much the treatment is much more simplified and uh, with favorable side effect profiles? Yeah, not recently. I would think um, the way I would say it is that I think people don't appreciate or don't understand how far we've come in this whole equation. And you're right about the diarrhea, you're right about the neuropathy and the nerve discomfort, you're right about um, the neutropenia, the low blood cell counts, red blood cell counts, white blood cell counts, all these kind of other things that people were traumatized by and substituting one disease for another back in the 80s and the 90s and even the early to mid 2000s uh, before 2006, we started with our first uh, single tablet regimen. And now we're looking at a context going into 2021 where we have multiple single tablet regimens. Um, and things have been simplified to the point where the main potential side effect that people are experiencing is a potential weight gain. Um, and everything else has been minimized to a certain extent. But I think from back then, you know, realizing how to change people from one medication to another was was difficult. And I think particularly, I'd, I'd want to say for, you know, people who are what are what we call long term survivors with HIV, who have had HIV for 30 to 40 years and were on some of those more toxic medications and endured some of those toxic side effects way back in the day. There's a lot of trauma that comes with that journey. And I've mm -hmm. heard a lot of patients as well as friends who are reluctant, exactly like you said, to change their regimen because the regimen saved them. And they were, if they were on yeah. death's door and they were sick in the hospital and couldn't get out, and all of a sudden they started this regimen and they got, you know, their viral load, you know, went to below 20 or 50 or whatever we were measuring at that time, their T cell count bounced up from five to 500. And there's a certain amount of attachment to a regimen and, everyone should be able to understand this, that saved your life. And so when you come over with the newer, shinier, here, here's once, once a day, one pill, once a day you can take, and it's better. Some folks are going to be understandably reluctant to make that transition and make that change, but it's our job as providers, like you said, 
to really kind of emphasize that and give them information so they can digest it themselves. I can't tell you the number of times I've had people who refuse to go off a medication and then I'll give them the information to digest and process on their own. And then they come back, we switch and then their other side effects go away. And then they're like, oh my God, that diarrhea mm -hmm. I had or that insomnia mm -hmm. or that I was agitated all the time and now I feel better. And it's like, yeah. yeah, but they have to go through that process. And I think our role as providers is not to just shove a new pill down their throat because it's newer and shinier and once a day with potentially less side effects, but to actually hold their hand through that journey and understand how they're feeling as they're going through this transition. It's very important. We hope you enjoyed the practice of medicine. For more episodes in this series or SMA's The Business of Medicine podcast, go to sma.org forward slash podcast or subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. For more information about SMA's mission, please visit sma.org. And thank you for joining us today.